Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whichever time zone you're in. Uh, it's great to be part of this conversation. I think uh, the timing is excellent from Startup Rizzo because as India moves away from uh, the brutality of the second wave towards some kind of normalcy, and Canada is moving at the same time uh, towards uh, the post third wave unlocking process. I think this is the good time uh, to be talking business and good time to be talking uh, startups. Uh, I would uh, begin by commending Startup uh, Riso for uh, taking this initiative on top of your Startup Bridge initiative of last year, because I think uh, this is something that uh, we need uh, to have conversations on. This is really the future. And uh, we had a conversation with the team from Startup Russo, and I was delighted to have a brainstorming with uh, uh, Gaurav uh, Mitali and your team. And I think uh, what we certainly did identify was uh, the huge potential in the India Canada tech corridor of uh, having more uh, uh, startup activity. Uh, also, let me congratulate the cohort chosen today because uh, I was looking through this morning the uh, profiles and looking at them, it looks like the future is here because uh, these are companies or uh, startups in, uh, in uh, AI, blockchain, big data, machine learning, born in the cloud companies. I hadn't heard of those 3D printing. So this is really the cutting edge of uh, technology. So congratulations to all the companies who made the cut and who are here. And I'm glad to see that this conversation will go to a lot of experts. Uh, I see a lot of friends here on the panels, Raj Narula, uh, Dr. Nemi Bhante, uh, Mr. Stuart Beck. I think they will all give you a more granular picture. What I thought I'd do in the 10 odd minutes I have is just quickly give you a bird's eye overview of what's happening on the India-Canada corridor before I get on to identify four opportunities which we have identified in the commercial wings of, uh, of our uh, High Commission here as uh, uh, promising opportunities in the startup sector. So the big picture in the India-Canada relationship is that it is a strategic partnership which is driven by the economic partnership. We've had a strategic partnership in place since 2015, and the headline of that partnership has been the amount of investment uh, we are getting in terms of uh, foreign portfolio investment from Canada uh, in the last few years. So the investment went up from about $5 billion to more than $60 billion uh, today uh, by uh, major investment firms uh, and pension funds who have uh, really placed their faith uh, in the Indian economy. And this investment has gone into sectors where we ne needed that patient capital, which has come in uh, from uh, areas like uh, logistics to infrastructure, to uh, real estate, to energy. And more and more, we are trying to have conversations on enticing this investment into the uh, startup sector. Uh, I think the uh, big picture in terms of the investments has certainly been that Canada is punching well above its weight in terms of uh, the portfolio activity. And uh, today, if you look at the largest global investor in India, it's a Canadian company. It's Brookfield, which has a portfolio of over $20 billion. Uh, you look at the first startup that came uh, into existence in 2021, that was a FinTech startup, uh, digital insurance, the digit insurance, which was promoted by Fairfax of Canada. So Canada is very much part of uh, the uh, economic uh, milo in India. Uh, if you look at the economic corridor, we estimate even in a pandemic year, it had reached a value of over $100 billion with, if you combine trade, investments, and uh, other uh, uh, remittances, uh, the number of students coming in and so on, the activity is over $100 billion, and this is certainly going to uh, grow uh, by, by a very strong exponential uh, kind of factor. Also, a special feature of Canada is the strength of the Indo-Canadian community. The 1.6 million Indo-Canadians uh, lend a special uh, special kind of force to this 
uh, relationship and that's how networks are created and they have a special commitment towards making these funds uh, making these uh, a, a special uh, kind of uh, uh, mechanisms available for india and just to cite one example uh, prem vatsa whose company fairfax has gone from 0 to 3 billion dollars of investment and is uh, possibly going to go uh, to over 10 billion dollars of uh, investments in india he told me when i discussed startups with him that i don't really look for companies i look for people and this is the investment the network of people uh, innovative uh, ideas from innovative people is what uh, this kind of investment would uh, go into so at the government level there is a great deal of understanding both uh, india and canada recognize the startup ecosystem have uh, two of the largest startup ecosystems in the world you would have seen uh, the prime minister of india addressing viva tech with uh, with uh, french uh, on the france india uh, corridor and similarly in the uh, he has been addressing the india canada uh, economic corridor since last year so there is a great deal of scope but the uh, tech uh, corridor in the g2g sector is yet uh, to be developed fully so i have been having these conversations and uh, i invite startup resu to give us advice May, from the ground up, from the conversations you will have over the next few days and weeks on what the governments can do. For instance, should we have a startup fund, a fund of funds, uh, which uh, is available to startups uh, uh, specifically? Should we have, uh, for instance, at the government level, a uh, government and, uh, and uh, private uh, partnership to have a specifically a devoted fund uh, with which both governments could contribute uh, for startups. So these are ideas we're discussing, tossing around, and we'll be happy to uh, take them forward. Uh, in terms of uh, the entire startup uh, ecosystem, I could tell you that um, what has struck us is how when we talk of the Indian economy and its growth now, uh, the ambition of becoming a $5 trillion economy in a few years and a $10 trillion economy by the end of the decade, the ambition bases itself uh, on uh, startups, um, unicorns, but also startups. We uh, heard about the large number of unicorns coming out of India. And uh, we, we know that uh, the paradigm is shifting in terms of the future growth. It will be more and more led by uh, startups uh, and uh, newer companies. And therefore, there would be a great deal of interest in pushing those. So uh, let me, in that overall context, uh, uh, tell you what we see as four areas of focus uh, here at uh, the embassy in terms of uh, the opportunities in the tech domain. I think the number one opportunity is uh, medical sector and uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, given the current scenario and given the current focus globally, I think uh, everyone is trying to expand their public health outlays and this is an opportunity for mutual benefit here. And Canadian institutions are uh, engaged in scientific research and development, and these advances can leverage the scale and strength of the Indian manufacturing in the pharma sector uh, to compete in global markets. So that's the big picture. One example of this is just two weeks ago, we have a vaccine collaboration, uh, a sort of startup, if you will, uh, between uh, a company, uh, a Providence Therapeutics of uh, Canada, which will manufacture vaccines in collaboration with uh, Biological E, a company in Hyderabad. So I think that is one example of uh, health sector uh, collaboration. The second broad area I would say is high tech manufacturing. And uh, Canada has a fine uh, pedigree in advancing manufacturing and technology innovation. And according to Stats Canada, more than 2000 Canadian firms are involved with high tech manufacturing for the global market. So uh, this is uh, something that this manufacturing is not often done in Canada, but in overseas locations, in China or other locations. And what Indian companies can look for is uh, to offer manufacturing capacities uh, to these Canadian companies, uh, provided they are able to provide high quality and competitive uh, uh, you know, offers. And uh, what Canada also has is excellent higher education.
education and research facilities. So what uh, we feel there is an excellent uh, fit here because India can offer well-regulated business uh, environments uh, with uh, rule of law, integrity of uh, IP, and allow manufacturing at uh, competitive rates. So this is something that we are having conversations with a large number of uh, Canadian companies, uh, which are thinking of reshoring uh, their supply chains in India. So where, where does uh, a startup opportunity fit in is something which we could have a conversation on. On the third broad area is digitization and artificial intelligence. Uh, certainly, I think uh, Stuart is here and he will speak about the di digital supercluster, but there's a strong research capacity there uh, in Canada, thriving startup scene, a significant uh, in investments by multinationals, and a large number of uh, Canadian government initiatives that encourage innovation and have placed Canada at the forefront of uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, not just now, Canada has been a leader in uh, deep and reinforcement learning for 30 years. And uh, what we've seen in the past five years is as uh, startup and corporate interest in artificial intelligence accelerated is a solid uh, academic uh, uh, and foundation which was developed into a thriving commercial ecosystem. So Canadian startups are implementing artificial intelligence in uh, uh, fields like FinTech, business analytics, life sciences, autonomous vehicles, and clean tech, uh, uh, which brought pretty much cutting edges uh, reform. So this is just an illustration of what Canada is offering. And I see that there is a great deal of fit in, in the kind of companies we are talking about. And I think the fourth big area would be green energy and clean tech. And uh, here, Canada uh, performs uh, well relatively in the early stages of uh, clean innovation, such as R&D, but uh, its performance has not been so great as uh, the potential clean innovation moves towards commercialization and market deployment. And uh, there's actually been a decline in uh, the globe uh, in Canada's share in the global uh, clean tech market. So we feel here's an opportunity for uh, Indian uh, firms in the clean tech sector who are partnering with uh, Canadian firms in the Indian market, uh, which offers huge uh, opportunities, of course, to uh, to expand and grow. So I thought I would leave it there with uh, uh, the big picture and four um, possibilities that we have identified and wish you all the very best in these uh, deliberations that you're going to have. Thank you.